I knew they were real because I'd read them on Reddit. I didn't think that those were from traditionally published highly rated books. Hey readers, writers, and story lovers, my name is Hannah, I publish as H.S. Paisley, and today I'm going to ask you guys a question. Do white male fantasy authors suck? <laughs> Do white male fantasy authors suck? <laughs> so I'm asking this, I'm, I've been asking myself this really for some for some time now and I'm going to review Mistborn in this video and part of the reason why it has taken me so long to record this review is because I was going to do kind of a series around this question and I've decided to just throw it all into one video because I was taking too long. And part of the reason why I wanted to do a series is because there are several authors for me that fall into this category of, of I, I, I think they suck. And, and that's a strong way to put it. I don't really mean that they as human beings suck. I just really, I mean I don't like their books is what I mean. I don't like their books. And those authors are Pierce Brown, Patrick Rothfuss, Brent Weeks, and Brandon Sanderson. And I mean perhaps there are others. I'm not sure. I, I didn't... I, I haven't gone out to to find more white male fantasy authors that I don't like. But those are the four that were top of mind. And I started thinking of this question before I had read anything by Brent Weeks or Brandon Sanderson. Horrible! Horrible. And I was wondering why. Why do I think this? I mean, I had read and tried to read again The Name of the Wind. I hated The Name of the Wind both times. Although the second time, I guess I liked the first hour and a half of the audiobook more. Maybe I liked it the first time, but I totally forgot that that section had even happened. But as soon as the guy started telling the story, I was very, very turned off. Uh, and the Red Rising trilogy, I, I hate Red. I hate Red it because I was seeing a guy at the time who really liked it and I just wanted to be able to perfectly articulate why it was garbage. <laughs> Like, I'm just a horrible person. I had seen a lot of Brandon Sanderson stuff pop up on my YouTube channel because I do watch a lot of writing videos and he was putting out a lot or, or I had just stumbled into his corner of YouTube. And I just decided that I hated him, which which I, I realized was not fair. I also decided this about Brent Weeks with no context whatsoever. So I, I told myself, Hannah, you're being a crazy person. You can't hate these people for no reason. You need to read their books and watch some of Brandon Sanderson's videos. Maybe you'll learn something. And you know what? I have learned some things. I actually watched one of his recently because I'm writing a heist novel and he gave some good tips and I liked them. But the thing that really frustrated me about Brandon Sanderson and, and just kind of, I guess, anyone in the majority might have this same thing. He, I watched one of his videos, it was like 45 minutes long, I actually have no idea why I watched it, but in it he was telling this story about when he first really got into writing, or, or I guess like the reason, the first time he realized somebody believed in him. And he, the story he told was he was in high school and there was a writing contest and he was like the geeky kid in high school or, or something sitting there writing his fantasy stories or whatever. And his English teacher or homeroom teacher, whoever it was, at the end of class or some point in the class, you can see that I don't really remember the details of this story, but the overarching theme I do, came up to him and, and gave him this flyer for a story contest. And in the video, Brandon Sanderson tells us, the viewer, that he didn't, this teacher didn't tell the entire class. He knew that this was an opportunity for Sanderson to find a place. He knew that this was a contest for him. So he just gave it to him. And he ended up winning that story contest. And this like, I mean, you know, a butterfly flaps its wings and wherever and somewhere else somebody farts. Um, I, I think that what made me upset when I heard him tell this story and is part of the contributing factor to why I, I am more predisposed to dislike white male fantasy authors is that had I been in that class, the teacher would have walked past me. And like I was a basketball player in high school. Not a lot of people knew that I was writing. People just saw an athlete when they looked at me. And that he tells that story with pride makes me think he doesn't understand the world he's living in. I just feel like he has no idea that that is part of the problem. That there were other people in that class who could have been successful as well. But the teacher walked up to a white boy and gave him the opportunity only. 
it, it would have been so simple for the teacher to tell everybody and then go up to Sanderson and be like, look, I see what you're, you're doing here. I think it's really important that you enter the story contest, blah, 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 pump his tires. But that's not what happened. I automatically, I, I had decided to read Mistborn, but still had this bad taste in my mouth. I read Brent Weeks' The Way of Shadows because I hated him for no reason as well. The Way of Shadows by Brent Weeks, number one in the Night Angel series, follows this character, Durzo Blint, who is an assassin and is like the best assassin in the whole wide world. And this kid, Azoth, who's like this grubby street rat with gumption, also wants to be the greatest assassin in the whole wide world. And so he trains him up. And one of the things that he does in, in training him, teaches him how to be a noble kind of, and inserts him into the nobility, renames him Kylar. And Kylar uh, basically has to learn how to navigate being an assassin and politics. The way time passed was done incredibly well. There were these huge time jumps and I could actually see the character development happening between Azoth and Durzo and how they interacted with each other differently as they got to know each other better. I could also see how Azoth was a different character after some of these long time jumps. I thought that was, was handled beautifully. Overall, the story itself was like quite complex. I think it, it maybe needed to be for the type of story that Brent Weeks was telling. And, and that part for the most was, was done well. I mean, I definitely didn't remember everybody's name. Like there were a lot of characters and I didn't follow everything that was going on, but I was able to keep enough of the pieces of what was happening, the important pieces of what was happening top of mind that when they all came together in the end, I was like, got it, got it, got it, got it. I see what you did there. So, but this book, <laughs> this is the thing that I didn't think that they were real. The, the like subreddit you read, men writing women, I didn't think that they were real. Like I knew they were real because I'd read them on Reddit. I didn't think that those were from traditionally published, highly rated books. Professionally edited books. I was wrong. He was suddenly silenced as breasts went past. No, not just breasts, the breasts. They were perfect, not precipitously exposed, but perfectly shaped. These floated past him, held in a gossamer embrace of fabric, rejoicing to cling to such nubile curves. Logan didn't even see the woman's face. Then, as she walked past, the sweet curve of swaying hips and a flash of lean calves. That's real. <laughs> I was listening to it. I was sitting in my bed listening to it like this. Logan didn't even see the woman's face. I actually had to rewind to, to make sure like I didn't black out. And then this gem at the end of the book, I think you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen and the purest. I'm not asking you to fuck, but maybe someday I'll earn the right to ask for something more permanent. <laughs> I could tell that, that there were maybe not so many women consulting in, in how this book was written. Brent Weeks Wave Shadows, <laughs> two stars. So like, I just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a boon. That was not a boon for white men writing fantasy. And then I read Mistborn. Honestly, when I finished reading Mistborn, I thought, okay, I don't hate white men writing fantasy. I just dislike the other three <laughs> and don't particularly care for Brandon Sanderson's novel. Now, this is one, um, in, in an earlier video, I talked about how I think, I think it was an earlier video or maybe I'll post it later or whatever. I can appreciate an author getting better throughout their career. I don't think that is a reason to have your first book be trash. I have no idea when he wrote this in regards to his career. I don't know why I think it was early on. This was written in 2006 and it's the first of a trilogy. And, and I think like the way the book ended, like kind of a happily for now, was done quite well. And I think that that this as a almost father-daughter story also done quite well. Like I did really enjoy that. And my Dyson novel is also a similar mentor-father-daughter story. So, so I did really enjoy that. The characters in this book, for the most part, the ones who I could remember their names were very fun. I, I liked it. The book follows the adolescence of a young girl named Vin as she learns to become a Mistborn, which is the magic system in this book where different types of pure metals can be like 
burned intentionally, burned inside a mistborn's body to create different, to have different things happen around them, to control different things. And I can't remember what the name for the other people are who only can do like burn one of the however many metals, but a mistborn can, can use all of them. I, I enjoyed this book for the most part. It was a bag of tropes. A street urchin, rags to riches, overthrows the evil empire, chosen one. They were all there. Like any trope you want, they were there. Now, I also think that I've realized something in reading this book, which maybe is a cue to why I don't like most male fantasy authors. And you guys can let me know. Do you think more often than not, are male fa male slash white male fantasy authors more or less likely to write hard magic systems or soft magic systems? Are they more or less likely to have long fight scenes or shorter fight scenes? And I've learned in reading this book, I don't like hard magic systems or long fight scenes. <laughs> So maybe that's it right there, you know? Like, I, I think that I don't know how I feel about 100% soft magic systems. Those are okay. But I definitely don't like 100% hard magic systems. And I'm pretty sure The Name of the Wind had a very hard magic system. And to me, the author explaining a hard magic system is just like the author jerking off next to their computer, except it's a Word document open, not porn. And, and like, I get it. You're really smart and you put this whole thing together and, and well done. I just wish it didn't feel like that when I was reading it. And to me... The explanation of the magic system in Mistborn felt like Sanderson flexing his like author figure it out muscles at me and I didn't love that. I felt something similar when I was reading Pierce Brown's the third one. Golden Sun? Was Golden Sun the third one in the Red Rising trilogy? Whatever. This is a spoiler for that series. The entire trilogy is from Darrow's perspective. And then my favorite character, Heart of My Hearts, the only reason I was able to make it through that series, Severo, gets killed. He dies. And Darrow is like gutted, devastated. Oh, but it's all a trick! Oh, you're so smart, Pierce Brown. You tricked me. Like, he... Darrow knew the plan the entire time. He would have known Severo wasn't dead. He wouldn't have been going through the emotional reaction of Severo dying like we read he was. To me, those things are authors being like, ooh, I can trick you, or ooh, let me flex my muscles, or ooh, let me show you this cool thing I can do. And when they do that and I don't notice, awesome. But when I can tell that you're doing it, no thank you. The other thing too, which I wonder, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I feel more and more like I'm becoming a gender abolitionist, but people who are raised male, I guess, or, or as, as men, I think maybe write romance differently and less, and I just don't enjoy it as much. Like, if you guys watch my book videos, you know that I love romance novels. So for me, Mistborn got way more interesting when the love interest showed up, and I, I became much more engaged. But overall, like, this book was fine. Two and a half stars, Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. Two and a half stars, I forgot to say that. There was a line where uh, I thought, in the context of having watched that video of Brandon Sanderson telling this story of how a teacher walked past every girl in the room and every person of color in the room and everybody else in the room directly to him to tell him that that he could become a writer and and not tell anybody else that they could become a writer that he then writes the line how could the nobles not see how could they not understand same question Sanderson same question now this book was written in 2006 and, and the video was recorded a lot later, but the message to me, like the situation is still the same. And, and I wonder if for me, the almost similar, and this is just kind of occurring to me now, similar to how like, I have actually really been struggling to enjoy romance novels written by black women that I don't know that I enjoy fantasy written by white men because there is an undertone of how these people have had to move through the world or have gotten to move through the world in their writing. And I'm just not interested in the level of privilege that a white, assumedly straight, man is bringing to fantasy. And I think it's uncomfortable for me to read the pain and trauma that a black woman is, is writing into a romance novel, you know? Like, and I don't know if that's more a comment of me or the writer, uh, or, or what I'm looking for, which is probably what the right answer is, is that I want to have fun. And when I'm seeing lines like, 
how can the nobles not see? How can they not understand? And I'm thinking of what Sanderson said. I'm no longer having fun because I'm thinking about the real world again. And when I'm reading a romance novel by a black woman and and I see currents of, of not this romantic fantasy, I'm thrown back into the real world. And I get that that on the romance side it is perhaps what the author is intending. I'm sure it's not what the white male fantasy author is intending, but I, uh oh. Storage low, tap to manage. Editing Hannah here. I totally forgot to talk about Mary Sue's. Oh, you got a good look at my kitchen there. It's not too messy, that's okay. Because I feel like in uh, Patrick Rothfuss' The Name of the Wind, if that had been a biracial woman, I think I might have said this in another video, if it had been a biracial woman who was like just good at everything right away, maybe I would have loved it, you know? And I don't think that we have male Mary Sue's in the same way that we have female Mary Sue's or Marty Stu's or whatever the other name is, you know? People aren't gonna point at Steve Rogers and say that's a Mary Sue, but kinda is. And there was this great video I watched on this by Jesse Gender that I highly, highly recommend you guys I really enjoyed this video and it really made me think about about this topic of white male fantasy authors and their main characters being maybe Mary Sue's and, and maybe this is why I don't like them because they are this character but also because I can't identify with that character if that makes any sense at all. I essentially think that it's a me issue it's something that I'm looking for in these books that I'm not getting. So do white male fantasy authors suck? No, of course not, of course not. They're just not for me, maybe. Let me know a book that you think I might like, white male fantasy author, or a black female romance author. I wanna know. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've talked about today, what you thought about them, what you thought about my question, my discussion, my thoughts, whatever. I gotta wrap it up because there's no storage on my phone. I gotta stop talking. Anyways, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy, taking care of yourselves and each other. And I hope you're hydrated, so if you're not, go get some water because you're probably dehydrated.